Good morning. I'm sorry I'm a little bit late today. I was having some problems with my internet. But I think I finally got it fixed. So, good morning. Technology at its finest. Praise the Lord. Nothing will stop us from doing what God's called us to do. We'll just keep working at it. So, I apologize for being a few minutes late. I was having trouble getting on my internet this morning and uh, not really sure what's going on, but hey, I'm on now, so I'm happy about it. Lord, I just thank you for these ladies. Thank you for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for what you're speaking to us this morning, for our opportunity to, to worship you and to spend time in your presence. I ask you, God, to just bless these ladies as they sign on this morning. I have a word from the Lord for you this morning. I have a word from the Lord for you this morning. A fresh, fresh manna for you. Fresh manna for you. Lord, I just thank you for Tina. I thank you for Karen, Rose Edwards. I thank you, Lord, for Melba. I thank you, Lord, for Bethany. I thank you, Lord, for Ann. I just thank you for these beautiful ladies. Deborah, uh, we had several ladies that came yesterday morning to hear Andre. I just appreciate you ladies driving to be a part of that service yesterday. You blessed my heart. Thank you for Laura, Laura for uh, Kim, Gina, Hilda. I just bless these ladies as they're coming on this morning. Janice, Be uh, Selby, Goss, or actually that's Lisa, I'm sure. Thank you for Lisa, Lord, Kelly Atwood, Lori Rutgers, uh, Claire McGee, Darcy from Vancouver, Laura Keenan, uh, Tammy Barton, Melissa, Jody. Lord, I just thank you for these beautiful women as they signed on this morning. Liz, Terry Lee. Lord, we thank you, Lord. I want to encourage you, if you would, um, I had a friend, a preacher friend, actually it was Andre that gave me some wisdom the other day. He said, if you will tell the ladies, first of all, Facebook has it set up where there are certain algorithms, and, and if you do the same thing all the time, they limit, even on your page, the people that are following you, who actually sees you. So what you have to do is you have to break the algorithms because uh, they're, they're just trying to force you to spend a bunch of money, which, you know, I get it. But, so here's how we can break algorithms. By you, first of all, just liking the page when you get on, like the page, and make a comment. Uh, you know, say, Carol, um, Carol, say, I, you know, I'm from Vancouver, or I'm from Houston, or pray for me, or love being on Mother's Design, just make a comment. If you want to go on and put in prayer requests too, then that gives us an opportunity uh, when during the broadcast to pray for you because I have a team working to pray for your prayer request as well as I go back and look at a lot of them myself and pray uh, through them. So you can put your prayer request. Um, you can just tell us where you're from. So make a comment, do a like, and then if you'll share the post, we'll break the algorithm and, and then our prayer cast will be we will begin to be seen by people that are that are actually on the page that maybe don't get the uh, that are not getting it and then people that are not on the page they'll be what will happen is they'll start sharing it with other Christians they'll find other like-minded Christians and start sharing it so if you will share the page if you will put in your prayer request or tell us where you're from you know, just, just make some comments along the way. Pray prayers with us, whatever you feel led to do. And then also like the page. That will help us break the algorithm. And we can get this prayer page in front of a lot more women and drive our participation up. Because really the goal is one thing. I, Pastor Kelly doesn't really care if that number says 300 or if it says 3,000. What I care about is 3,000 women praying. What I care about is is the, the lives of women being touched all across the nation. I don't necessarily care about it for my ego stance. At, at 59, the ego is not that important anymore. What's important is what Jesus wants. So I'm just encouraging you. He's, this is some of the wisdom he gave me, and he said it really helped uh, get his, his, his um, broadcast 
to more people. And the goal is to get 10,000 women praying with us in a 24 hour period. And I would love to see right at a thousand praying with us live every day. So there's only one way to accomplish that and that's to share, to invite, to comment, and to like. To share, share the broadcast, and then when you're sharing it on your page, make a note, because I've noticed when I share something, I'm just trying to help you because this is what helped me. If I just share something, people may or may not look at it. But if I say, hey, take the time to listen to this. This changed my life, or I love this. Just a, I love this. Everybody that's friends with me will more than likely go and listen to it because I said I love it. So put a comment there. Share it, like it, and then if you'll put your prayer request and your prayers as we pray through today, it'll be such a blessing. So enough of that. Also wanted to remind you that we are going to be in Juneau, Alaska this week. We fly out tomorrow morning. Um, so pray for us. We are all, all uh, six of us had to have a COVID test yesterday, <coughs> which we passed that with flying colors. Hallelujah. So we can fly into Alaska. We're looking forward to going and praying with pastors um, Mike and Deanie Rose. And Ben Rose is going to be flying over. It's going to be an amazing time. Uh, I want to thank you, ladies, for your faithfulness to the prayer tour. So we're going to get started praying. And then any other announcements, I want to talk about some other things too. But we'll do this after we get through praying. I'm not going to be in a hurry today. So if you'll just hang with me, I really have a word from the Lord for for you this morning. When I got up, my husband woke me up as he was walking out and I laid me down for about 30 more minutes and then got up. And right as I was getting up, God began to speak to me about uh, the some, some promises and some gifts and some open doors for you. Some uh, He is really opening heaven up over you in a miraculous way. And there was two parts to what he said to me. And so I want to I want to share that, but I'm I'm kind of waiting for for people to get on. Get your communion. Let's start with communion today. Lord, I just thank you for your for your body and your blood. Once again, I thank you for the opportunity of loving you, um, and serving you, and and being your daughter. What a privilege it is to be your daughter. To be a mother that in Zion to be a woman that loves you and that you love me back and you loved me first. That's, that's what's most important. You love me first. And I just thank you for the opportunity to seek your face today. I thank you for the opportunity to pray and, and to, to lay before you, God, uh, humbly before you and ask you to wash us and cleanse us and purge us today and make us vessels uh, ready for the master's use. Make us honorable vessels ready for the master's use. I pray, God, that you wash me and you wash the ladies today. We remember your body. We remember your body. We remember the pain you went through on Calvary. We, I thank you, Lord, for 340 prayer altars that are going up this morning, and we're remembering what you did on Calvary. We're pleading the pleading the blood of Jesus, and we're remembering the stripes that you took on your back. And Lord, you not only took those stripes for our physical healing, but you took it for our emotional, our mental, our spiritual healing. You took it for the healing of the heart and soul of America. You took it for the healing of our cities and our churches. And and God, you're, you're doing something so special in America. You are doing, I don't care what's going on. God is doing something amazing in America. God is turning the hearts of the men and women in America toward him. God is doing something special. And it, 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 may, it may get, it will get worse before it gets better. I don't, I'm not going to say may, it will. I know it will. I know what the Lord has shown me. It's going to get worse before it's going to get better. But God is going to protect us. We are going to be like the children of Israel in the land of Goshen in Egypt. When all the things were going wrong, when everything was going wrong, they were protected. We will be protected. And God is turning the tide in America. And there is, a, there is an enormous tidal wave of revival that's getting ready to hit America. And we will see the heart and soul of America healed. And we're taking this body today, not only for our physical healing, we're remembering God's body. And we're taking this as a, as a memorial, as a remembrance of what he did. 
and we are receiving your healing Lord but we're also receiving the healing for a nation we've got your blood Lord we remember your blood we remember the blood that poured out of your body God we're taking this Lord not only for our healing but for the healing of our nation in Jesus name We thank you, Lord, that you're washing our sins away. You have washed our sins away, and you're washing America by the blood of Jesus. We pray a firewall of protection around America. We ask you to protect us from all outside enemies and to dismantle all inside, all interior enemies. We thank you for protecting us from all outside enemies and for dismantling all interior or inside enemies. I thank you, God, for turning Saul's to Paul's. People that were vigorously against your word, vigorously against your principles and your way, God, I thank you that you're going to give them the kind of experience that you gave the Apostle Paul in the New Testament where he was struck down and you revealed to him by your power the truth that he was really fighting the church. He, he wasn't just fighting people, but he was fighting the church of the living God and he was fighting you, Lord. He was fighting you. He thought he was fighting the enemy, but he was fighting you. And God, I just thank you that you are turning Saul's to Paul's all across America. I plead the blood of Jesus that you will open people's eyes. Open their eyes. Open their eyes, God. Stand before their bed. Stand by their bed and reveal yourself to them. Reveal yourself to them. Reveal yourself to them. Reveal yourself to them in Jesus' name. Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to pray. I thank you for 380, uh, I think it's 79 women right now praying, 379 prayer altars praying. Okay, I want to give you what the Lord gave me. 2 Kings 4, 9 through 10 is the story of the Shunammite, Shun, Shunammite woman. And one of my favorite, actually one of my favorite stories in the Bible. There's a lot of things about her that I admire. Um, one of the things that you will notice quickly is she was a woman of, she was a woman of influence. She was a woman of means. She was a woman that could get things done. So there's things to be admired about her right from the in, onset, okay? The, the prophet would come and would have a meal with her and her husband. Now, you can tell from the very beginning, her husband's a good man, a godly man. He loves God too. But he's content with just giving the prophet some food and taking care of him for the moment or the couple hours and sending him on his way. But she's not content with just enough. She is not a just enough girl. She doesn't do anything just enough. She, she loves God with such a passion. She wants to go above and beyond. And so, <clears throat> you see where she comes to her husband, and she says, look, I, 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 I love feeding him, and I love taking care of him, but I want to do more. I want to do more. I want to uh, build him a room. I want to put a candlestick. I want to put a place where he can rest, where he can read, where he can pray. I want to build a room for the prophet. I, I don't want to just feed him, honey. I think that's great that we're feeding him, but let's go, let's go further. Let's go the extra mile. Let's, let's do the extra. Let's do more. Let's build a bigger altar. Let's sacrifice on a bigger level. I, I just feel something about this man of God, and I, I want to bless him. And I feel like that if I do the right thing by him, not only am I blessing him, but I'm blessing Jehovah God. So that's what she does. They, her husband allows her to do it, and they build this room. And he comes, and now he can not just only come for a meal, but he can come and rest, and he can come and be refreshed, and he can come and... Uh, and commune with the Father. She built a room for God in her house. She built a room for God 
in her house. And as I was thinking about that story, which I know very well and I love, the Lord said two things to me. He said, I'm going to do two things for the mothers in Zion. Because they've built a room for prayer, they have built a room, and they're faithful every morning to get up and get in that room of prayer. I am going to open up and heal every barren place in their life. See, she was barren, and she couldn't have children. She didn't even ask the prophet to heal it. She didn't even have to ask. Her willingness to build the room made God move toward her and say, is there something I can do for you? And she said, no, I'm well. He said, but I see, I see you don't have a son. And then she even said, now don't start playing with me with that because that's a real tender spot in my life. And, and you know and I know that in our day and where, where we live, to not have children is a curse. And I've been blessed in a lot of ways, but my womb is closed. So don't start promising me something that won't come to pass because it, that will be so devastating for me. But he prophesied, you're going to have a baby this time next year. And she did. She had a son. So that room opened up the barren places in her life and they became fruitful. And here's what I heard the Lord say. Your faithfulness to prayer has unlocked and broken every spirit, unlocked heaven over you, and broken every spirit of barrenness in your life. So whatever has been barren, I want you to write it down when we get off this broadcast, and I want you to say, I'm barren no longer in this area, but God has opened heaven's window over this area of my life, and he has unlocked his treasure, and I'm, I'm barren no more in this area. I want you to write down every area that you've been barren in, and God says to you, this is a prophetic word to you, that you are barren no longer. And you didn't even really have to ask him, but your faithfulness to build a room of prayer has unlocked heaven's resources over you, unlocked heaven's portals. Healing is flowing over you, and you are barren no more. Okay, the second part the Lord said, not only did God heal her barrenness and cause her to be fruitful, but he also, that room, protected that promise from the enemy killing it, stealing it, or destroying it. Because if you know the rest of the story, down the road, the dad and the boy are out in the field. And the boy has a stroke. It's a heat stroke. And they bring the boy back in. And I love what she said. She didn't let him them put that boy anywhere. She didn't let them take that boy to his room or take that boy to her room or take him to the living room or the kitchen. She said, go put my boy in the prophet's chambers. Lay him right there, and I'll be back. And she got on her horse or her mule or whatever she was riding, and she rode as hard and fast toward that prophet. And when everybody asked her, how are things going, she said, just fine, just fine. And we know the end of the story, God healed. The prophet came back. She would not the prophet said, I'm going to heal him. And she, he sent the word. She goes, oh, no, no, no. No, you're not sending a word. You're coming back with me. I'm carrying the man of God back with me, back to the place that I built by faith. Back to the place, back to the altar I built by faith. Back to the place that, I, that me and my husband sacrificed to build for you. You're going back with me. I'm not leaving you. That promise you prophesied, it came, and now I'm not doing without it, and I need you to heal it. So she took, the prophet went back with her, and he laid on her promise, and he began to breathe over that young man, and life came back into him, and God healed him. So the room of sacrifice that she built opened up the barren places in her life, but it also kept the enemy from stealing, killing, and destroying the promise. And the word of the Lord to you is your faithfulness in prayer has opened up every area 
a blessing that God can open up over your life. And every barren place is now healed and will begin to produce supernaturally whether you ask for it or not. Your faithfulness is pleasing to God. And that is the word of the Lord to you this morning. And the Lord said, not only am I opening up your barren place, but I am protecting the promises that come out of those fruitful places. I am protecting the promises. I am protecting the promises. And no weapon formed against you will prosper. No weapon formed against your children will prosper. No weapon formed against your ministries will prosper. The hand of God is on your life. And the barren places are now fruitful. And the, and the fruit from those barren places are protected by the blood blood of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus. And Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to trust you today. I thank you for 406 prayer altars that are going up before you today and that are worshiping you today. And God, we have come before you and, and you said our faithfulness has opened up every every blessing that could have been poured out over our lives. And God, it has caused the barren places, our faithfulness to obey you has caused the barren places to begin to be fruitful and multiply. And that our, our, our obedience has not only opened up and healed our barren places, but it has sent the spirit of protection. God, you are the spirit of protection. You are our way maker. You are our protector. And you will keep the enemy from killing, stealing, or destroying any good thing that you've given us. And we just declare the blessing of the Lord over these women. We declare that they're blessed going in. They're blessed coming out. Their children are blessed. Their homes are blessed. Their marriages are blessed. Their churches are blessed. Their businesses are blessed. Their ministries are blessed, God. They are blessed, God. They are blessed. We thank you for the opportunity to get to pray with you every day, to get to pray and go before your courts and go before you, God, and call on your name and ask you for wisdom and strength and help, God. We could not do this life without you. We would not want to do this life without you. We thank you, Lord, for blessing our children, God, for bringing them home, for causing them to get on fire for you, God, for revival, Lord, just literally infiltrating and saturating every area of our family, our churches, our cities, our states, our government. God, we ask you for protecting our president. We ask you, God, to protect him. Don't let any evil befall him. We ask you, God, for righteousness prevailing in the voting booths in November, God, that righteousness will prevail and that you will lead and guide your people by your, by, by your spirit, God, that when we, we won't vote by what we mama necessarily did or daddy necessarily did or even what my friend necessarily did. But Father, we will seek you. We will seek you. God, we will vote according to your word, according to your Bible, Lord. We will find candidates in our cities, in our states, and in our uh, national that are as close to what we believe in, 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 in as far as the precepts and the principles of the Bible. Lord, we know that sometimes these are hard decisions, but God, we're gonna trust you in that. And we're not gonna throw our vote away. We're gonna vote and we're gonna make a difference with our vote. We're also gonna love God. We're gonna love, we're gonna, we're gonna reach out to people and love. We're going to talk to people with hearts of love. We're gonna speak truth. We're gonna have a blood-bought backbone, but we're gonna speak truth in love. We're gonna pray truth. We're gonna pray for the five-fold ministry. I pray for the churches in America. I pray that the pastors will have a backbone, a blood-bought backbone. They will stand and protect our rights as the church of the living God. They will stand and protect our rights as the church of the living God, but they will do it with grace and with love and with honor, not running other people down, not, not, not making other people feel bad for the decisions they're making, but just knowing that we have to, to vote and we have to be people of honor and people of prayer. Um, 
And Lord, whether people are having service online or they're having it, you know, in physical buildings, every state's different. Every church is, is faced with different challenges. I don't ever want to be one to to run other churches down or other pastors down. That never That's not my heart. If they're preaching the word of God and they're preaching the gospel of Jesus, I am for them. I am for them. God, what I'm asking for is a healing in America of, right, uh, of the hearts of your people. God, let the ministries in America, let the fivefold ministries in America be on fire for you. Let them be prayerful. Let them be consecrated and, and dedicated and set apart and sanctified. Let me be consecrated, dedicated, sanctified, and set apart. Let every church in America that preaches the Bible, that preaches the Word of God, be on fire for you, Lord. Let them be dedicated to your will, your purpose, and your plan. God, we ask you to wash us and cleanse us and purge us. Set us on fire for you. Another thing that the Lord spoke to me, you know, you hear a lot about uh, being an influencer. You know, there's a lot said about being an influencer. And they're usually talking about people that have a lot of people following them on social media or maybe they're an influencer, uh, in a, you know, in a lot of ways. There's a lot of ways to be an influencer. And that is good. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, we want Christians to be influencers. I mean, we can win more souls to Christ by being influencers. But I'm gonna to talk to you today and just remind you of what God considers, what God looks at as an influencer for a woman. He looks at a woman that is prayerful, a prayerful influencer, and that would have been Hannah. She came to the Lord when she was in deepest need and, and she knew that, her, that really her only hope was her prayer life. So she influenced God through prayer. We also need to be a courageous influencer. And Esther 414 shows us what a courageous influencer looks like. She was willing to sacrifice her own robes, her own royalty, her own pleasure, and she was courageous. She stu stood out at a time that it took much, much brave it took faith and it took bravery because the man that she was married to had killed his first wife for not honoring him. And so for her to step out of line, even the slightest could have caused her a lot of trouble, but she was courageous. She showed us what a courageous influencer and woman looks like. And then there's the, the fragrant influencer, a woman that is a fragrant fragrant influencer, and that would have been Mary Magdalene when she prepared Jesus for the greatest trial of his life, the greatest fulfillment of his destiny. He was getting ready to die on the cross, and she prepared his body with the perfume, and so she showed us what a fragrant influencer, somebody that puts off a sweet-smelling savor unto the Lord, and, um, Last but not least, a faithful influencer, a woman that is faithful. And one of the, 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 two of the women that we can look to for that would have been Lois and Eunice. That was Timothy's mother. And he was raised by a single mother and grandmother. But she, they were faithful influencers. They did not let their struggle keep them from being faithful single mother, grandmother, and take care of that young man to the point that he was one of the ones that changed the then known world. Timothy was a mighty man of God. God used him powerfully because of a faithful influencer. So God has called us to be a prayerful influencer, women that, that influence God and man through prayer, through prayer. He's called, called us to be courageous women courageous influencers like Esther 414, that we're willing to even lay our life down, if it means it, for the gospel to be preached and for the truth to be propagated across America. We're willing to do whatever it takes. He's called us to be a fragrant influencer like Mary Magdalene, to, to lay before the Lord and to worship the Lord, letting 
letting our oil, letting our incense go up before him. And he's called us to be a faithful influencer. Lord, I just thank you for these amazing women. I thank you for their heart. I thank you for the opportunity to pray with them. I thank you, God, that they love you above everything in this world. And Lord, I just want to take the time right now to pray our two prayer directives. And the first one is that, Jesus, you are the eternal King and Lord over America. And we stand today declaring that you are the eternal King and Lord over America. And we ask you, God, that every heart in America turn toward you and realize that you are our King of Kings and you are our Lord of Lords. And Lord, we ask you to keep the bond between America and Israel strong. And we ask you, Lord, to help America and President Trump and all those in government always love Israel and always protect Israel, that our, our uh, ally with Israel would always be strong, that our union with, with Israel would be strong. I pray for the peace and protection of Israel. I pray for the peace and protection of Jerusalem. I thank you, Lord, for watching over Israel in Jesus' name. I pray for your people, God, that you would watch over your people. We love Israel. We love Jerusalem. We love, God, the Jewish people. We love the Hebrew people across the world. And I pray, God, you bless them. You strengthen them. You keep your hand on them in the name of Jesus. I pray for these mothers today, these mothers in Zion. I ask you ladies to go on and like this broadcast again, like it again. I ask you to make comments, put in your prayer request. I wanna pray for you this morning. Anybody that has a prayer request, put in your prayer request so that we can pray and believe with you. Also, I'm asking you to share the broadcast and put a little comment up there to invite your lady friends to pray with us every morning at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. I also want to encourage you that the next few days, uh, through the end of this week, anything that you give to the prayer tour, and there is actually a button on our website that's called Disaster Relief. Anything that you give to, the, to we are asking you to give to the Disaster Relief. We're going to go into Louisiana, not this coming week, but the next week with a whole truck of goods. We're gonna take some goods over there. And then we're also going to try to do some worship over there. So uh, anything that you would normally would give to the prayer tour the next five days, I want you to consider giving to disaster or to the hurricane relief. You can find it right on our website. Um, and then that gives us an opportunity to sow some seed. We're also taking some, some monies out of our tithing and out of our savings to help these people that have been in such uh, I mean, it's devastating. If you see the pictures, it's devastating. Many of their homes are just completely wiped off the map. So we're, um, we're gonna do what we can. This week, we're in, um, we're in uh, Juneau, Alaska. So uh, we're gonna be there. So tune in with us Wednesday night. It'll be seven o'clock Juneau time, Alaskan time, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time. So whatever that equates for whatever time zone you're in. But if you could just join us for even 30 minutes to an hour and pray with us as we go into these different regions and pray. God is doing something very, very special. When we, he said, put your boots on the ground. And so we've been obedient to do that. We had to reschedule Nashville. We will have re Nashville hopefully rescheduled within the next couple of days. And uh, we're working feverishly to get everything in place. But we know God is moving in a powerful way. We know that God is doing something amazing in America. I want to encourage you to pray. I want to encourage you to fast. And I want to encourage you to give. Do not be fearful in this time. Uh, not to, don't be fearful, so fearful that you don't tithe and you don't give. Uh, God is your source. Literally, God is my source. Every, in one, in one stroke of the pen, you and I both know it. We live in an uncertain world. Everything we have could be gone. And we have to learn to trust God. We, ha we must trust God. So we must trust God with our time. We must trust God with our resources. We must trust God with our children. And God will take care of us. You hear me out. God will take care of us. God will bless you right in the middle of a pandemic. God will bless you when, 
it doesn't matter if, if there's frogs jumping out there like there was in the children of Israel or people are dying. God will, God will bless you right in the middle of all kinds of things going on because we are going to be like we're in the land of Goshen. But we must let our faith be strong. We must be courageous. So I encourage you to pray, to fast, and to give. You want to give towards this prayer tour? In the next five days, everything that's going to come in, we're going to put toward... Um, disaster. We're going to sow a seed into these people in, in Louisiana. I have lived by this principle my whole life, and God has never forsaken me. You hear me? God has never... I have lived by a principle of giving and faith my, since I was 16 years old, and I have always had more than enough, enough to share, enough to help others, and enough to do the work of God. You cannot outgive God with your money, with your time, with your resources, with your love. God, God wants to be first in your life. He wants to bless you with every good thing there is to bless you with, but he wants to be first. And Lord, I just thank you that there are 379 prayer altars still praying with me right now, 382 praying with me, and we have made you Lord over our lives. I declare the blessing of the Lord. We, uh, I declare the blessing of the Lord over you and with you and flowing through you today. Um, I want to encourage you to watch the prayer cast. I want to encourage you to pray with us. And I want to encourage you to not only watch the prayer cast, but share it. We love you so much. We'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless. Bye-bye.